what's up YouTube? Since I wasn't able to head out to the outdoor rifle range today, I decided to go to the indoor pistol range and I just did some further testing of some new um, handgun reloads that I've been working on. Um, I decided to take the Glock 27, the so-called baby Glock subcompact, uh, out for a test run. It's not something that I usually shoot a lot because uh, the 40 caliber is kind of snappy in such a small gun and it's not that pleasant to shoot more than a, a box or two of uh, 40 caliber through it but um, you know this is a, a defensive pistol it's something that a lot of people carry this or the or the Glock 26 and 9 millimeter and um, I need to keep my skills sharp with it as you know that shooting especially a small handgun like this is a perishable skill so you gotta practice once in a while um, to stay on top of things so uh, here's one of my reloads this is uh, this happens to be nickel plated brass and it's real pretty and shiny so I didn't want to shoot it I'll just use it as a, a guide for further reloads just put it in my reloading uh, die and set the bullet seating to match this and it saves a lot of uh, time and effort well anyways here's the uh, first target Uh, this is at 7 yards, um, and I was using 165 grain copper plated bullets, not true copper jacketed bullets. Um, those are more expensive, but I use the Rainier Ballistics 165 grain 40 caliber bullets. I like to use copper plated bullets like this and uh, like these. This is for a 45 ACP because they're cheaper and if you use them in a lower velocity round, like the 45, the 40, the 9 millimeter, it's perfect. The accuracy is good. Um, it's when you get above 1,200 feet per second or so that <clears throat> um, you start to have problems. So for the regular velocity loads, I really like them. Well, anyways, here's the target from uh, 7 yards, kind of like a realistic self-defense distance. It's usually what I shoot at. And for a subcompact shooting a snappy 40 caliber, I'm I'm happy with this. It's this is pretty much all I need for the purposes of this gun here. So now let's go to the 1911 and my 45 ACP loads. Sorry, I uh, forgot to mention that I did shoot nine millimeter out of this as well. Um, I have a Lone Wolf conversion barrel. It's just a simple, quick barrel change, a nine millimeter magazine, and you're good to go. You can basically turn this into a Glock 26. So with the 9mm loads, these were my reloads with 124 grain Hornady FMJ. Now that is a true copper jacketed um, lead core bullet. Again at 7 yards, this, I happen to be using power pistol um, and federal small uh, primers. And um, I was happy with this at 7 yards for a concealed carry type pistol. This is fine. So, uh, with the Glock 27 in its original 40 caliber configuration and as a 9mm with the uh, barrel swap, uh, I was pretty happy with the way my reloads performed. Okay, now um, let's go on to the 45 ACP. Test gun for today was the Kimber Custom 2, full size government 1911 with a 5 um, inch barrel. So, here's my target. Same distance, 7 yards. 45 ACP using these uh, copper plated 230 grain slugs. These are very similar to um, the Rainier or Barry's bullets. Um, I bought these from the reloading shop up at the outdoor range, but it's the same thing copper plated 230 grains. This is, um, this is actually 25 rounds, uh, three eight round magazines, and I did an 8 plus 1 on on one of them. So 25 rounds at 7 yards and I'm quite happy with this grouping. Um, this gun, I changed the sights on it. It shoots pretty high so in order to get the bullseye I had to hold right about here. And the sights need to be drifted over a little bit. It's shooting just a bit to the left but when I was holding it in the same spot consistently, the same point of aim, I was getting a, a nice result here. And what I'd used this time that I've never used before was this powder. 
This is tight group from Hodgdon. Uh, it really does um, hold true that a little goes a long way. I only needed 4.8 grains of powder. And I actually have an empty shell here with 4.8 grains of powder in it. Uh, let me see if I can focus that for you. Anyway, it's hard to see, but the powder only takes up about a third of this um, empty case. So when I was loading these, I was kind of skeptical. I was thinking, uh, how is uh, such little powder going to push this big 230 grain slug out of there? Uh, but it did. And quite nicely at that. So if you guys are looking for a powder to load um, 45 ACP with, uh, that's not a bad choice. That tight group works quite nicely. Okay, and last but not least, the Sig Sauer P226 Full Stainless. This is a 40 caliber. Uh, of course, it can shoot 357 Sig as well. Today, I just shot my 40 cal reloads. And um, once I got used to this trigger, after having shot a Glock and a 1911, it took me a few rounds to get adjusted to the trigger, um, double action, single action. And once I got adjusted, uh, this SIG just continues to impress me. I don't have the target with me. It was a big NRA style target. I threw it away, but I did take a little clip um, showing the target at the range. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead that and add this, add that to the end of this video. So overall, um, my adventures in reloading uh, continue to pay dividends. I really enjoy the hobby. I am starting to save money now, now that most of my initial investment has been um, recovered. And uh, it's really fun experimenting with different powders and bullets, overall lengths, things like that. Um, and especially now, you know, it's so hard to get factory ammo for a lot of the common calibers that uh, it's really, I'm really um, thankful that I started reloading. So anyways, here's the clip of me with the uh, SIG at the range. And you guys have a great week. Talk to you soon. All right, guys, we're at the range. This was at seven yards. My 40 cal reloads. There's still a few of them left. And uh, the SIG P226 um, stainless. I'm pretty happy with that.